during most of this process is also important. Um, let me actually speak a little bit about the Tetracal. Is this ours? To keep? That is yours to keep, provided it works, and I believe it will. But we've had problems with uh, shipping damage and stuff like that. So the Tetracal is a Venturi style flow uh, calibrator. You've got three Venturi adapters that fit into into this well here. Um, the only one you'll make use of for this instrument is the one that's stamped uh, with the number one at the end. Um, this one does 6 to 30 liters a minute. It's the smallest. The next one up in size does 1.5 to 6 liters a minute, and the last one will do under 1.5 liters a minute. Then you also have three different tubing adapters, depending on the size tubing you want to use. Um, there's two others in here. It runs on batteries and or AC power. Um, it is a barometric pressure reference, as I mentioned before, temperatures in here. Um, this can be upgraded to have an external temperature probe, which would come out of this port right here. Um, also, for those uh, really interested, there's software on here where you can actually hook this up to a, a laptop or a computer, and you can monitor, say, set this up and monitor flows over long periods of time on a particular piece of instrument, and it would log it into the laptop. So I've never made use of that feature, but I hear it's pretty cool. Um, this gives you barometric pressure in millimeters of mercury and millibar, gives you temperature in degrees Celsius, and it gives you both volumetric and standard flow. Volumetric is listed as QA and standard is listed as QS. I'm going to make use of my Eutechnics digital thermometer for my uh, the temperature calibrations and, and verification. So I need to backspace up one to get to my calibration menu, and that's F1. And then temperature calibration is F1. So, uh, when doing the calibration verifications outside, it's usually best to try to keep it in shade and out of the wind to get um, the best result. Overcast um, days are ideal. Yeah. Um, one thing that's uh, the wind may, can make it particularly difficult because, for example, my uh, Eutechnics I think has a much faster response time than the instruments. Temperature sensors are changing conditions. My reference keeps up <coughs> faster, so it's kind of hard to get them to be in sync. So sometimes I end up doing the calibration twice uh, to get it right. So I need to hit space to calibrate, and I'm going to punch in my reference value of 32.4. That's off your little black box there, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you have the opportunity to put a minus sign in by hitting F1 or changing the units from Celsius to Fahrenheit by hitting F2. Wow, it's 100 degrees out. Well, this that's that's the uncalibrated. Uh, okay. Sample temperature, so that's probably a little off. The 32.4, hit enter. I get a new raw offset. Actually, would you mind writing this down for me? Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of hard to juggle. Well, there's a temperature cal, there's raw offset. The raw is 1579. The raw numbers that you see is a voltage in millivolts. Um, just you know, an offset's 54. And then I'm going to do a verification and we're going to write it in along here in a second. So yes to save, I'm going to backspace out of the calibration menu and go into the audit menu where all the verification items are. F3 and temperatures F3 as well. So I've got 32.5, I'm going to push that in and enter. Alright, so i got a sampler of 32.7, sampler value. Yep. My reference is 32.5 the difference of 0 0.2. For all the verifications, the software actually gives you the absolute difference. Um, that, yep, that's well within our plus or minus 2 degrees. So, hit enter for next, then yes, I'm going to save, and then to go back to the menus. Next, we're going to do the barometric pressure. So, I need to exit out of the audit menu, go back into the calibration menu. Barometric pressure calibration at 2, and we're going to use the tetracal. So space to calibrate. I've got 741. Now the sampler is going to require a decimal place, but you don't get a decimal place for the tetracal, so you just got to put a point zero in. So 741.0. Now if you didn't put the point zero in, 
374. You know what, what it'll say is invalid. Oh. So, point zero, enter, and then, uh, actually, I can break this. It's just that the temperature, try to keep everything. Yeah. So now I'm going to back out of this and go back to the audit menu. And bearish pressure is at four. Uh, 741.0. for our leak check. So our leak check is, the only place the leak check is, is in the audit menu. So hit F1. And for leak checks, flow calibrations, flow audits, and filter change, software does a pretty good job prompting what you need to do next. So you don't necessarily need to commit everything to memory. So F1 for leak check. It gives me an opportunity to cancel out in case I didn't want to do leak check instead of having to be forced to go through the entire menu. Uh, yes to continue. Install flow auto adapter valve open. Valve's open. In the so, yes to continue. We're going to hear a click, the solenoid, and now the pump should come on. While we're waiting for the pump to come on, solenoid's open, it's magnetic. The ones that are not active aren't. So, you can tell that it's, you know, that there's turn to it. Probably. So. Certain solenoids only get an instantaneous current and switch. This one is a constant current being applied. So, uh, so this vacuum ring you see here is basically the operating vacuum of the instrument. They should be between 80 and 120 typically. So this is fine. If you see something really low, that means you probably have a gross leak somewhere. If you see something really high, there's a restriction somewhere. And those are problems for the flow calibration. So we can continue by hitting yes. It's going to ask you to close the top adapter here. Hit yes again. Now it's going to pump down. I typically like to see it pump down to about, at this elevation, to pump down to about 700. That's not necessary because that's well, you know, that's a much higher vacuum than the instrument's ever going to operate at. It's kind of anyway. Well, it'll automatically prompt you for the next level. But, okay, so now it's going to tell me to close the pump shut off valve. Then I'll hit yes again. It turns off the pump, and now we're going to monitor the vacuum level. Um, so the leak check is, it's going to, over a 35 second period, monitor the vacuum level, and the vacuum loss can't, cannot be any greater than 230 millimeters of mercury. Now, it won't start that check to a one of two things. The vacuum level actually reaches a certain point, or after waiting for a certain period of time, it'll time out and then start counting at 35. So we'll see a timer start when it's ready to actually start the test, which should be uh, pretty soon. So there we go. Well, that is excellent. We have a difference of 12, and we're allowed 230. <laughs> we'll be doing this again after we remove the cyclone to check it out. When we put it back together, we should do a leak check again Just to make sure, make sure the system is intact. Right. Yeah. Just reseeding the cassette can make a, a small difference in your leak check. This could easily be 30. You're just reseeding this cartridge a different way. But that's all within acceptable limits. So now we're done. It says pass, so you don't have to commit that value to memory. It'll let you know if you passed or failed. So you hit enter. Release both vacuum slowly. The critical one is going to be this top one to release it slowly, otherwise you'll blow out that filter. The side one, not so much, because there already is some vacuum between the pump and the shut off valve. Can I go ahead and open this one? Yep. Calibration. Um, answer to continue. It's going to Give you a warning, leak check should always precede a calibration. We'll get the same worry, warning when we do the verification. Okay. We just did, so. <laughs> we just, yeah. Do you have to enter to acknowledge it or anything? No, or we usually have to wait for it to disappear on its own. So, yes, continue with calibration. Our first set point is 10% below target. Our target's 22, so we're at 19.8. Uh, next. Next, reference flow meter now. Assuming is the 